So my, uh, the, you might have read that I'm the, uh, the head of digital strategy for Puma. Last month I made a transition over uh, to the U.S. Uh, number one retailer in sporting goods and apparel. Does, have, have you guys familiar with Dick's Sporting Goods? Can I get like a show of hands? Have anyone heard of the company? Or is, yeah, it's not too well. It's very known in the U.S. Uh, you're probably more familiar with, with Puma. Yes? Okay. Okay. So the, the thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about a month ago was integrated marketing and, and some of the tactics that we kind of employ and some of the best practices and some of the successes and some of the failures. But with my transition, I thought something interesting kind of came up that I really wanted to share with you guys. And given, the, uh, given I'm the first speaker here, you are going to hear from so many interesting experts related to certain fields uh, in technology and marketing. And I really just wanted to help kind of all of us set the tone for how to make some of those decisions around vendors uh, and more kind of specific channel strategies. Um, and I believe I was told that today is, is National Consumer Day or something similar to that. And as most of these presentations or uh, agencies or vendors or strategies will be around knowing more about your customer, I want to make sure that we don't forget who we are as a, as a company. And the way, the style in which we use uh, is extremely important. There's many different brands, there's many different strategies that can all be successful. Um, but finding the one that is reflective of you as your company is, is extraordinarily valuable. The interesting thing from the transition from a brand like Puma uh, to a retailer is this philosophy on where the, uh, the strategy kind of emerges. And that's kind of the topic I really wanted to focus on today. Um, this is my uh, interesting graphic that will hopefully kind of stay with us for the rest of the presentation on some level of success. And a very interesting thing that's happening in U.S. companies that are not maybe born from uh, IT or e-commerce is a separation of responsibilities between the digital brand marketing and e-commerce. And I'm not sure if that is necessarily a, a crisis or a conflict, but it certainly helps um, or hurts the, uh, the ability for, for companies to really understand who they are. Um, and I don't know if this, this separation is, uh, is something that is happening in Brazil, but it is a, 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 um, an interesting challenge to overcome uh, at both Puma and as well as at a retailer, where the responsibilities of these two departments strategically are like a yin and yang. They traditionally represent two sides of the same uh, company story or customer uh, objectives. Um, first, looking at the digital brand, these are steeped in you know the these types of buzzwords like the the artistic, the creative team, the 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 wow, the um, the excitement that uh, some of our agencies, our software solutions, our campaigns are born from. It's also very engagement driven. These are higher level conversion funnels that are sometimes vague. They are briefed in to get customer reactions, sometimes more than a specific sales goal. They're also very qualitative. The approach to analytics is sometimes upfront. It is focus groups, it's consumer sentiment, it is related to uh, some feelings and emotions and direction that your brand might want to be uh, going in that direction. And finally, it's a department and an agency style that is born from uniqueness. It's a constant uh, opportunity to challenge, try new things, break down, evolve. The e-commerce side of that coin is a different set of of goals which are a little more kind of easier to relate back to a core business. Um, they are sales driven, they are return on ad spend, they are uh, very, very uh, focused on a return on investment. 
They are quantitative. This is your, your Omniture, your, your, your Site Catalyst, your Google Analytics. This is all of the numbers that reflect the key actions that some of those higher briefs and goals, how they are actually captured. It's also, if, if the brand team is the, the artist, this is the more scientific approach. This is the iterative uh, evolution through testing and, and scientific strategy. And finally, it's steeped in operation. They, once there is a strategy, they build out a plan, they hire the personnel, they hire the right agencies to staff this for a long-term uh, process. But the thing that is so fascinating is that these are different departments, at least in major US retailers. And at the end of the day, they are really more representative of two different strategies, and even as you step back, more of a philosophy and an approach that as you're looking at vendors and you're looking at agencies or you're looking for certain strategies, I want you to, to kind of uh, look at some of these individual channels that I've thrown up here and we want to walk through how individual takes on a more of a brand approach or more of an e-commerce approach should always be considered. And really, the channels are not owned by any particular department. They are resources for the larger corporation. Some, a good maybe analogy would be the photocopier. Anyone can use them. There's different objectives that come from different parts of the company, but really the channels are uh, to be used to support the larger goals of the company, and they could be prioritized. In the case of a brand, you can imagine where certain uh, strategies kind of come from the brand team, and in a retailer, the e-commerce goals might be more reflective. And both teams can kind of be used to support each other. And really, the combination of the two is really where your corporate uh, strategy related to digital can be. Huh? One other sort of department or responsibility that I did not include up here is, is IT. And I think that the reason why I didn't do that is because there really isn't a IT department anymore. Everyone has a responsibility for IT. Uh, the brand team, the marketing team, the CRM team, the analytics team, the e-commerce team are all uh, have a responsibility to enter, you know, uh, for information technology. Uh, as 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 you will always have developers, database administrators, coders. Everyone has a responsibility in that strategy. So the first kind of foundation, and, and all of these, these pieces are reflective really of just the tip of the iceberg, the thing the consumer sees. Um, but there is a whole infrastructure of all of the operational processes, logistics that make up those businesses. And I'll leave that to the experts uh, for the rest of this, this conference and really focus on once you have that, that, those, that core down, um, this is really where the marketing and uh, the e-commerce start to come in. And I wanted to have the word website up here, but really I think it's much more broad to have the term UX and design because a website is just one particular channel where a, a design approach that matches your consumer is, is much more valuable um, as you kind of think more broadly around all the different engagements, either in social, in store, uh, on personal devices, uh, and, and as well as the traditional website. And the two kind of parallels um, that I wanted to walk through were just for each of these channels, the, the maybe the, the tactic or the style that the digital brand philosophy might bring uh, compared to maybe, uh, more of a e-commerce approach. Um, UX even as a term, when we refer to this on the brand side, is this engagement, this, this new experience, this artistry this one-off unique design that challenges what we've kind of done before, either from the qualitative kind of assessment of what we've been doing, or just a, a new approach based on uh, some interesting designs or even some non-technical or non-digital uh, user interactions. UX design on the e-commerce team is very performance-based and iterative and 
based in A-B testing on choosing the right path to evolve your process uh, with every opportunity. And one of the things that's very interesting, uh, and I just want to show you as an example, is a product page that uh, will be kind of the new Puma direction for, for product pages. And it, I only give you the above the fold kind of piece, but this is a, a nice example of collaboration between two different departments. Um, you have some very kind of rigorous testing around where the button should be placement for, for purchase online, um, but you also have not just uh, standard photography, but the, the brand team was able to pull in actual video, and not just commercials, but strategically shot uh, video to support a particular product in its context environment. And through testing and, and kind of iteration with both teams, finding ways to get some of that video to actually enhance, keep people on that page, but still keep the conversion rate up was extremely valuable. And it was not just something that one team designed and the other team implemented. This was a relationship born from many different tests off video that you know, would start on social media like YouTube and product page enhancements or assessments of, of what, the, uh, what the user is actually doing um, on the page. And when they come together, not only is it, it rather, you know, hopefully visually appealing, but uh, the, the analytics are there to support that direction. Um, and as more opportunities for strategic kind of content come into the UX design, uh, some of those other uh, channel responsibilities we'll get to uh, help influence the marketing department uh, through very kind of precise recommendations on what is actually needed to support commerce, as opposed to campaigns that fly uh, in parallel but never really engage with your own commerce strategy. I don't have any good slides for, for SEO, but I think it's just as valuable. If that UX design and that, you know, that website experience is the foundation, the SEO is, is just as critical. Um, and this, again, represents that, that, uh, represents that parallel uh, in, in a very similar way, where there are performance-driven uh, keywords that are constantly being uh, made more efficient uh, on one side of the fence, but there are these aspirational or opportunity uh, brand keywords for either new product launches, new campaigns, any sort of new thing that is unclaimed territory in the eyes of your, your brand can also be added to that mix. And they need to have their own sort of KPI strategy and performance-based strategy that, that, that mirrors the, the deeper kind of foundation of your keyword purchasing. But it represents ways to grow and evolve and, and continue to uh, increase the amount of or opportunities from traffic. Uh, that you can bring to your site in a kind of very, very traditional baked into your, your, your site or your design uh, strategy. I think a very, very similar approach to SEO is the, uh, is the SEM. Uh, this is not just the landing page construction, but it also is the, um, the, the keyword purchasing as well as when your agencies or your creative team are developing these campaigns or, or speaking about product content that you're going after, defining how in which all of your channels, not just your, your SEM or your paid, will continue to push some of those very kind of specific keywords. And you really get this exponential effect if you can brief in a strategy to several teams that have ownership or responsibilities over, uh, this, is, this would include your PR, your digital PR, your social media, as well as some of your other channels. If there is a core kind of uh, set of goals related to copy or keywords, or is it an opportunity just for another, another promotion? And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that, and those are usually the highest kind of more responsive pieces, but it also gives you an opportunity to develop your own style and communication point. And as we look at some of these more, uh, uh, I guess, more uh, newer kind of channels that have emerged, 
Email is still there as a, uh, at least in all of my experience, a very high return on investment channel, which is perfect for testing either on that user experience optimization side or to copy. Excuse me. Is this thing on? All right, cool. Um, this is one of the most interesting things uh, that, that has has kind of always been there, but very recently, I'd say in the last uh, five or six years, has become a, a increasing part of an e-commerce or e-retail strategy where I was kind of uh, amused to find it's always been a, a key element to a brand's digital strategy or, or content strategy. And this is the not just the content that lives out in the web that you can curate, which is extremely valuable, but it's the ways to represent what your company actually is about through certain digital uh, media. This is your video, this is your blog posts, this is your, some of your, your social strategies. Uh, it's all that, that you know, high level brand copy that can actually be translated into something a customer can see, feel, interact with. Um, and you know, I think even at, at, at Puma for four years, the, what content actually meant evolved. And I think there's, there's three other kind of just larger points that, that I think are extraordinarily valuable that are not, again, related to a particular department, but have entire cor uh, corporation kind of ownership or responsibilities. And the first one um, is, is analytics. And I touched on a lot of those points in individual channels, but one of the nice things about some of the abstracting of the individual channels from departmental ownership is they can all develop their own kind of KPIs or ways that they improve themselves or ultimately determine success. So as some of these larger strategies or goals get briefed in, it's very easy and straightforward for them to optimize uh, against their responsibility in a multi-channel campaign. Um, analytics is obviously a two-way street. There's a quantitative and a qualitative piece. Um, but knowing the anonymous information about your, your website traffic is a very valuable, but only for a very kind of small or, 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 or thin slice of your, uh, your, your larger digital goals. And there's a lot of other opportunities, especially around uh, you know, social kind of uh, sentiment analysis, some of those larger conversion touch points uh, as your funnel of conversion starts growing, growing, and, and there's more kind of clicks or channels that are involved, getting a really good sense of, of how the customer engages in multiple pieces and who they are is, is, is really something that we are investing a lot of time and, and, and effort in, and not just as a CRM team or an analytics team, but a culture in which all departments share that responsibility for setting up their own goals and knowing how to track them, or, or at least briefing in those responsibilities to the appropriate uh, team members. The other thing, and I think there's a lot of really good um, conversation happening later today about this particular topic, I chose the term multi-screen. This could be omni-channel, multi-channel, multi-device. Um, but it is, again, reflective of all the different ways that a consumer uh, experiences your brand or your promotional strategy or your commerce strategy. Um, and it kind of goes back to even that, that foundation of UX design. Are you going to you know, look for a strategy that is a, one, uh, a single solution for multiple devices, or is it something uh, where each of those is, is tailored? And you know, it can work in a bunch of different ways. There can be a single responsive design, but strategic content based on that device. Or it could be unique design approaches to challenge uh, some of your, your pre-existing notions of how your customers interact with your brand. Um, this is also uh, dovetails very nicely with the omni-channel um, strategy that's related to logistics the way in which customers actually get your products, source your products from either stores, uh, distribution partners, uh, direct shippers um, is, is, uh, is very, very important. And sometimes the marketing team or the e-commerce team can actually just uh, enhance some of those more uh, logistical solutions um, through just 
providing some, some branding or, or promoting some of those, those nice features if that is really something your brand is, is, uh, wants to be known, uh, known for. And, and finally, uh, you know, hopefully this, the rest of this day keeps everybody excited about uh, the fact that innovation can really come from any, any sort of uh, channel, department, uh, or, or team member. And that could be agencies, uh, that could be uh, senior or junior employees, this could again be uh, some of that more scientific quality, or just that gut, gut instinct um, that, uh, that, that brings your company in the right direction but it is definitely related to uh, your IT strategy and your technical capabilities. Um, but hopefully there is a, a, a creativity in your own kind of brand style that uh, ultimately comes out through either repurposing of technologies, creative uses of pre-existing technologies, uh, or you know, it's your, your own product development. Um, and, you know, I guess that's really all I have to say about that, that topic. So um, thank you very much, um, and I hope you have a, a great rest of the day.